Live from Parts Unknown, you're listening to Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast. The only wrestling podcast on the planet, we think. Sit back, relax, prepare for positivity to run through your veins as Simon Miller gives you your weekly dose of powerful pro wrestling audio. It is Miller Time. Hello and welcome to Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast. My name is Simon Miller and this is a pro wrestling podcast. Uh, there's no need to adjust your whatever that phrase is. You don't need to look at your calendars. It is Tuesday, but we are dropping a special edition of the podcast because unless you've been living under a rock, you will know that on uh, this weekend just gone on Saturday, New Japan held their Dominion show in Osaka Hall. Osaka Joe Hall, I should say. And one match in particular basically blew everybody's minds. Now, I was uh, planning to talk about this anyway, but then I thought, well, there's double reason to do it now. Um, and we're going to talk about the whole card, but I imagine a lot of it is going to be spent on Kenny Omega versus Okada number four. However, before we get to that, I do want to welcome to the show a man that, uh, who told me when we first did a podcast a few weeks ago that he was a big New Japan fan. So I said, well, you should come back on and we should talk about Dominion. It's my man, Luke Robinson. How you doing, my friend? Hello, Simon. I'm all good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much, dude. Have you enjoyed wrestling these last few weeks since we last chatted? I have, actually, yeah. Dominion, in particular, was amazing. Indeed. So I well, can't wait to talk about it. That is a great segue. So, like, no WWE talk on this post. So I know a lot of people listen to this just for WWE chat. Don't listen, because we're not going to talk about that. We will do that tomorrow uh, in, the, in, the normal, in the normal weekly podcast. And as always, uh, this will be up on YouTube.com forward slash The Middle Report Rules. I'm on Twitter at Simon316, Instagram Simon316. And you can come on and support the podcast or come on the podcast by supporting at Patreon.com forward slash Simon316. Um, right, Luke, before we get into individual matches... I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's difficult to kind of talk about Dominion as a whole card because obviously it had this main event which has skewed, it skewed everything. Because the thing I find interesting now, a few days removed from it, is that it, the card as a whole was good. Like, it was a really, really good show. There were some interesting yeah. results. There were some great matches. Obviously, we had the whole Chris Jericho stuff, which is, you know, a huge appeal outside uh, of the Japan as, as New Japan tried to sort of spread their wings into into sort of further Global. territories yeah. yeah but really it is just kenny omega versus akada which everybody is talking about and i think that kind of sums up how good it was yeah i mean it was it was definitely the headline of why you should watch new japan really um if you haven't watched any of the omega okada's previous like three matches and then you watch this one, then you I think you're pretty much blown away by how different it is. Maybe you could say that I think to fair. any other sort of wrestling matches. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, that's so. fair. I think the best thing about it for me as well was it really rewarded f- people that have kept up with this over the last year and a half or two years. If you want to, if you want to go that far, like there was callbacks, there was Easter eggs, there was, um, I can't think of other words, but you know, it, it, it allowed somebody who was a fan of New Japan and had been for the last year and a half and dedicated their time to the product to feel rewarded and satisfied for, you know, for reading up about the matches after the fact or listening to the promos or, you know, whatever yeah. else you want to call it. And I think you get a real sense of, oh, I'm really glad I did it. Now, don't get me wrong. Like you've just said, you can still enjoy it and use this as a stepping on point for New Japan. You can enjoy the match out of context, but I think it's when you apply context to it when you start going, this is just awesome. Yeah, I think as like the all the four matches between Omega Kada as a whole, it's sort of like a really cool storyline based sort of thing. So obviously you've got the one from Wrestle Kingdom, which like blew up the internet and sort of really put like New Japan on the map for people who were not like hardcore wrestlers, like wrestling fans. Um and then like obviously the other two, the fact that they are one one and one, one drew, one victory for each um sort of like made this like a must see just to see what happens anyway so i think the basis of having the last like this match that just happened um really did like reward people who have followed the previous three yeah and i think as well from sort of like a smart mark fan point of view which i hate that phrase but it's just a good way to describe it no one actually believed they could top what they'd already done like that was the big discussion that you know because some, yeah. people, some people prefer Wrestle Kingdom and some people prefer last year's Dominion show or, you know, the G, the other show. Yeah. Well, I can't remember what the other one was, but... Um, I think it was the G1 it was final. The G, yeah, well, I thought it was, yeah. yeah. And I, was, I couldn't remember. But I, I think that's where the kind of, you know, the cliched icing on the cake comes in. 
is that yeah. not only were they able to do it, but they've cemented now... And I do think you need the other three matches for this to be called. Like, I'm not going to say this is the best wrestling match I've ever seen. Cause I need to sit there and think about it. But it's certainly in the discussion. And I think oh, to, be, yeah. to be in the discussion, you need those other three matches. So now it's almost become this like, you know, quadrology or quadrilogy or whatever of matches that you can look back yeah. on. And over a year and a half as well, we all love long-term booking and the story. And really feel like invested in it. And I feel like you can't really do that with a lot of other wrestling companies because I get it. The modern fan has a short attention span, but this is proof that yeah. you can and that the payoff can be excellent. Oh yeah. It worked. It worked amazingly. What would you say is your favorite out of the previous three? See, I, I like dominion from last year. Um, I, yeah. th- I think that was, I think that was my favorite. I'd have to watch them all again now because I think, you know, this, this changes stuff. But yeah. I really did like Dominion. for me. The reason I knew that, um, that show was the best was when uh, Akada went for the, the one-winged angel. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Kenny Omega dropped to his knees, which was also referenced in the one from Saturday when Akada went yeah, to give him the, down. And he didn't have the power to do it himself. It was like, no, man, this is yeah. so ridiculously good. Uh, but I think I yeah. gave it to Dominion, but I think it would be close. How about you? Um, it's a tough one because I, I do love the fact that it ended in a, in a draw. Um, at Dominion, just for the simple fact that no one would have predicted that. You know, you don't uh, see a card and think, "Well, that's going to be a draw." Like that's that just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, so I love I love the fact that that's how it ended. Um, but the first one for me at Wrestle Kingdom um, was really sort of like the because it was like the first time you've seen it. I think. Maybe yeah, that's the, know, the reason why I think it's my favourite. Yeah, I think so. It's where it all started, right? So you can... Yeah. No, I think that's fair. I think they're all, they're all companion pieces to me now. Um, but, yeah. But focusing on the one on Saturday as well, I just... You know, we've all seen two out of three falls matches before. And, you know, in many ways, they tick the, the, the cliched boxes. You know, Okada won the first one, then Omega wins the last two. But it was just yeah. all the little things, all the nuances that happened. Like, especially how... The, this is the thing for me. It's how they won the falls. Like... Akada yes. wins the first four with a roll-up, basically, a cradle, whatever you want to call it. And then yeah. Omega wins the second one with his finishing move, the one wing angel, which we've not seen that much in, you know, these, these matches. No. Um, no, because I think it's obviously he only managed... The, the storyline of the first three fights, I think I remember, is that he couldn't connect with the one wing angel until G1, which he finally won it. Exactly, yeah. I think that's, I think that's how it went, wasn't it? He couldn't do it in the other two matches so when he finally done it he was able to get the victory yeah so i think that was it makes it special the one wing danger which well, you don't it. have a lot of finishes that are the special and that's the thing as by, well by it. it's like um what do you call it? It, it, it because he then won it with that you then you weren't sure who was going to win because you were like well maybe Ocado will win because we haven't seen the rainmaker whereas yeah if, you know, if Kenny, you, you, I think for me, if Kenny Omega had won that second fall with anything but the one-winged angel, I would have been like, well, Kenny Omega's going to win. We have to see the one-winged angel win. But yeah, because it's you, got to happen. It's got yeah. to happen. So the fact they've already seen it, then all of a sudden you're like, well, maybe it won't happen then. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's still, it's still like, like the whole way through that match, still could not pick who I thought was going to win. Normally in most matches you can see where it's going and then, you know, it, you normally nine times out of ten you're right. But in that match, the whole time... I, I didn't have a clue. Did not have a clue. Yeah, and I think that, and, that, and that's where the you know the believability factor comes in, and all of a sudden you're like, I, I'm you know I bought into what I'm seeing now because I even though yeah we, I know this has all been rigged, I can't figure out which way it's going to go. Um, yeah, and that, in my head I sort of thought Omega should win. It's time for Omega to win. But then I was thinking back to Wrestle Kingdom 12 when I thought, well, it's Naito's turn to win. Omega's had the title long enough. Uh, yeah, Okada sorry, he's had the title long enough. Naito is the most over bloke in the company. Yeah. Everyone loves him. It's his time to win. And then it didn't go that way. Yeah. So that was what was playing on in my head this time. Well, exactly, right? You think maybe... But then that's, the thing about, that's how even the Naito stuff ties into it. And then you realise, okay, well, they didn't, you know, they didn't put the, the Naito thing in there because they had this plan. And that's, yeah, you know, that's, exactly, where, that's yeah. when it just starts to get just unreal like the, the, the planning and the booking and the and the and the forward thinking and you know the commentators were great the fans treated it like it was a big deal like it's yeah. just it's just yeah it's just crazy it's just crazy the whole thing yeah. the whole the whole storytelling was just oh, i was just nuts 
It was just not. I also was. seen a thing that it was like that match went on longer than what Brock Lesnar has fought in minutes in the, like the last year was or it, so or something like one, that. One hour, ten, five. I can't remember what it was now. But yeah, it, something, it, something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it was long. Um, but yeah, like it's just. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just. I don't, I don't like comparing New Japan with. Um, uh, with, with WWE stuff because it's a completely different product and I feel it's a bit yeah. silly however that doesn't mean that I can't sit here and go well I you know I, I, I enjoyed I don't even say I enjoyed you know what I mean you know what I'm saying yeah, like, yeah, it, it's yeah. just I, I, I wouldn't want WWE to try and to try and copy them because that, that no. I, I, I just don't think that would work I, I think it's, that would, it's already there you don't want two of the same thing because else you just yes just pointless watching it exactly and that's not to say that WWE can't do better I'm not saying that of course they can yeah or they can take aspects from each each company could take aspects from each other companies. I yeah, think. Yeah, exactly. But you know, this this was a great advert into. And again, this was a show that had Chris Jericho on it, winning the IC Championship, and that was yeah. great. I love that match, like a proper old school brawl. But yeah. it didn't. It didn't. I mean, it, it will have a lasting effect once the hype dies down. Of course, I'm not saying it wasn't important. Of course, it was important. But at the same time, I've rarely seen. Uh, yeah, a, a card. Sort of yeah, do do do, do this yeah, yeah, and yet it could be completely sort of whitewashed <laughs> before yeah. before all was said and done. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that match just topped it off, really. Yeah, I, 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 as a massive spectacle. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it just, I mean, there's there's something we could talk. And also the fact that you know, Okada was having this amazing title run. Kenny Omega was the right guy to beat him. No one mind that he won. You know, no one, it, did, it felt like a win for Omega. It didn't feel like a loss for Okada. And the questions yeah. that are coming out of it, how can, Ke- you know, can Kenny Omega live up to this amazing title run that we just saw? What does Okada do? Who does Omega fight next? Like, it's just, not only is it the end of one story, but it's also it's, opened yeah. up so many stories everywhere else. And I can't remember a last time a wrestling promotion did that so well no. to the point that we can just it's always... so fluid, which is what I like. Yeah. It goes straight into the next thing. It's no like, oh, well, that's it. And then you don't know... You know, if you didn't enjoy it, then you wouldn't watch the next part. But because they they already leave so many questions of what's going to happen now, you can even hear the commentators happening, like saying it, what's happening now? And then obviously you've got obviously Cody coming out after it is. It's so fluid. It just leads straight on to the next bit. And then like you think what's going to happen to Okada now? Because I think I've seen a ridiculous statistic the other day that he's only ever won one title. And that is the IG, IWGP heavyweight title yeah he's never true, won yeah. anything else no i think that's true so you uh, think what, ha- what what where does he go from this yeah, where does it go now because he's still everything like that he's still one of the best wrestlers in the world like yeah you know he yeah. made that title reign what it was given how good he was so yeah now, yeah, now you ask yourself he, he can go in whatever direction he wants and he's got to have another match with omega you have to suggest now yeah and then what do you do it's just crazy it opens so many doors so many question marks and if nothing else if you just you know going from bell to bell psychology stamina cardio uh, facial expressions, selling, offense, drop uh, unbelievable, kicks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just just all of it. They didn't miss a beat. No, I really liked as well the co- the the commentary, the commentary team, Don Callis and Kevin Kelly. Uh, Kevin Kelly, when Omega come out, they they said straight away, you know, he's dropped, he's dropped a bit of weight, he looks shredded because the last time you seen him, which was at Don Taku, I think, he comes out when Okada challenges him. That's the last time you see Omega. Yeah. And he's a lot heavier back then, and he's not as shredded. Then he comes out, and obviously they, they say straight away, oh, he's been training cardio, he's shredded weight, because he wants this match to last a long time. He yeah, knows yeah. this match is going to last a long time. So even everything like that just makes you think, oh, yeah, that's, that's true. He does look thinner. He looks more shredded and ready for it. Yeah, exactly. It's those. It's it's the the aesthetic touch as well. Yeah, all, all of it was just. I mean, I I can't think of anything I could fault with it. I was just, no. I was trying to think this. I was trying to think of something that maybe. But no, there's there's nothing. And it went one hour one hour four minutes fifty seconds. It went, which is right. I mean, ridiculous. How 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 can a match that goes that long, you know, enter that stratosphere? It almost seems too long, especially after. Well, the whole show was what, like five hours, five and a half hours, whatever. It yeah, was. five and a half. I think. Yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, absolutely brilliant. If you haven't seen it, you should go and watch it. Uh, you won't necessarily think it is the best match you've ever seen, but I certainly think it will. You'll be up there. Well, it, it would at least get you thinking. Uh, it, you know, is what you know is, is it would be my guess. But um, 
yeah, I mean, for me, just just a fan. Th- I don't care about. I like star ratings and stuff like that, but whatever. It, I don't care whatever Dave Meltzer's got. That's the the big. What's he going to give it? Then give it forty two stars. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it really is. It, it's just a great. It's just it just it reminds you of why wrestling can be can be so fantastic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I agree. Uh, and we mentioned it as well. I mean, Chris Jericho versus Tetsuya Naito as well for the Intercontinental Championship again. Another thing that leaves you, you know, questioning what's going to happen next because oh, I did not see this coming. Well, no, I mean Jericho's hanging around. Clearly, yeah. you're not going to yeah. give somebody the belt and then go. Oh, I'm going now. That would be absolutely mental. So you yeah. know, it, it does seem, by all intents and purposes, is that yeah, Jericho's going to hang around for a while. He's now, I don't know what kind of feud he's going to go into next. I imagine the long term plan is that he does wind up losing it back to Naito, just because that makes sense to me. But it won't I, I like Naito as the Intercontinental Champion as well, so yeah, that would make sense. Exactly, but what that means, yeah, you know what that means going forward. I don't know, but and I think you know Jericho's a smart dude. I think he knew, um, yeah, I think he knew that he couldn't try and top either what Osprey had done or what Punk was get Punk or what uh, Omega was going to do. Yeah, and so he came with his old, you know, sort of. It's a completely different style of match, wasn't it? That's the thing, just beat the shit out watch. of each other, like yeah. you're throwing people through tables, pile drivers, which I've seen Jericho do in ages. Was it a pile driver or the power bomb? It was a power uh, bomb, it was, wasn't it? It was a, what, through the table? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he pile drive. It was a pile drive, wasn't it? I yeah. said that, and I'm like, what's that? Have I made that up in my well, head? I think Naito actually pile drive Jericho through it. A I table can't, because I, can't I think I was, was sat there <laughs> thinking that's probably the first power driver Jericho's took in a very long well, yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I thought. Something made me click, and I'm like, oh, I haven't seen Jericho being involved in a power driver for ages, so I couldn't remember yeah. if he took it or gave it. But yeah, it was. It really was. Yeah, just an absolute. I heard Don Callis say um, at the start of the match as well. He said the corporate shackles are off Y2J for the first time in 19 years. Which I thought was quite funny. Yeah, no, I think, I, I, yeah, I think that's fair. I, I think you could see that as well. I think you yeah. could see that uh, in uh, in its sort of his movements and his actions, um, or, or just what he was doing in the ring that he clearly felt he clearly felt free here. And I do love the fact that Chris Jericho keeps uh, keeps reinventing himself. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable! And he's he's brilliant over there. Oh, it's ridiculous! Like, it's, it's so good to watch. Like he, he just swears, he don't care. He's still nicking the cameras off the cameraman when he's when he's in the middle of a match and flipping off the fans. Like what they what they must think he's like is is so funny really to think about. Oh yeah, when he's just uh, flipping them off and yeah, the the fact that he he's a completely different character in New Japan to what he is in WWE, I think is hats off to him for actually doing something different. Yeah, because he didn't have um, to. He could probably just no. have been Y two J or whatever, and that would have been yeah. He could have come but... out as like the biggest face because he would have been still just as popular if he come back trying to be on the fan side of it. But the fact he's doing that is like hats off to him for actually trying that and, it, and, it, and pulling it off. That's the other thing as well, right? Yeah, he did it. He, like, he, yeah. He's absolutely done it. But no, I, I thought it was a great match. Again, it felt completely different to what I'd expect. I think Jericho knows that. I don't mean this disparagingly at all. I'm saying it's smart that he knows at his age he's not going to be able to be as athletic as uh, yeah. you know, other people that, that are on that card. But so he comes up he's with still chucking different. in lines, Soaks, though. He is. He did, well, fair play to it. That was almost yeah. fifty. But also, I, I actually think I actually think that works because oh, yeah. you know it's. Um, I don't need again the same thing like comparing WWE to, to New Japan. I want to see something different, and Jericho brings that in. Yeah. So yeah, I just I, I loved it, and when he won, and everything that happened afterwards. Obviously, I was like, wow, this is this is going places. You yeah. know, we're, we're not done with this at all. Yeah, he's sticking around. I, I I was I honestly was shocked. I thought out of the whole card i thought that was the one match where you could really pinpoint who was going to be the victor there because i don't think naito's even been titled for like two months i think less than that i think he what? took it off suzuki yeah that's right so now what i can see happening i mean this is nothing that doesn't make me a genius at all everyone has said this but i think this must be that naito wins the g1 um, i'd like to think so yeah yeah naito wins the g1 and then um Challenges uh, Omega. And, I guess so, right? Or maybe or then, I don't. I don't know what you do there, but you've got to imagine that's what is going to happen, or at least you'd think so. And and that, yeah, you know, and that, and also the cool thing about that is, is that obviously Naito's won it two years in a row, row as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Who was the last person? Has anyone ever? Uh, I mean, my, I, I've only been watching New Japan properly for about five, six years. I mean, it must have happened before. Um, Top of my head, I, I, I look it up 
I'm looking at no, because the year before was Omega, right. and got... he definitely didn't win it the year before that. I, I've got it. So it was Naito last year, Omega the year before that, then Tanahashi, Okada, Naito again in 2013. So that's interesting. Okada, Nakamura, Kojima, uh, Makabe, Goto, Tanahashi, and then Tenzon won it twice in 2003 and 2004. Ah. Uh. Other than that, Alchona won it in 9192. Anoki, of course, I knew this. Anoki won it three times in the 80s. I did know that. Yeah. And, he, and he won it three times before that. He won it four times. From, I'm, I forgot about this. That's how Anoki became Anoki. He won the. I knew this. Anyway, point being <laughs> that in, in modern times, you know, it'd be the first time since um, 2004 since somebody yeah. has won it. Uh, you know, obviously, it's his third win as well. So I think that adds up. And then he can go after the championship or he could do something with Jericho. Who knows? Who knows? But ultimately, yeah. I think it serves Naito. So that would be, uh, that'd be interesting. But yeah, I mean, genuinely awesome. Just awesome. Yeah, it was brilliant. I, I really love Tetsuya Naito. Like, he's, he's probably my favorite um, Japanese wrestler out of Because I think Omega is probably my favorite in New Japan. But I just love Naito, just his whole character. I love how long it takes him to take his suit off when he gets in the ring. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's it's... so much. Like, something that should really frustrate people. I want it to last longer. And the fact that even in this match, obviously he did take it off himself. I think Jericho ended up ripping him off him. But like, he still took nearly 10 minutes to take his trousers off. Yeah, he did, yeah. Well, like, he's, got <laughs> it. He's, he's got it, right? He's got it. Yeah. Whatever that thing is, he just, he just knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, and yet, at this point as well, as we move into Takahashi versus Will Ospreay, I know we're going back to front, but every belt basically changed hands on this show yes yeah and, and that was the other thing that got me i was like no one else dares do that but new japan just they have the balls to do this stuff yeah and what i thought was really strange was at the start i don't know whether you've seen the very beginning before any of the matches started the new japan's new president came out and he, oh, yeah. he spoke and did, a bit in did japan. a big promo yeah <laughs> yeah he spoke a bit in japanese and then he spoke in english saying how he wants the company to grow worldwide and yeah, yeah. beyond japan and then all the titles seem to change hands to people who are not Japanese, which well, I thought was very strange. Interesting, right? That's like a yeah. si- sign of what's to come. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Takahashi versus Will Ospreay for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Takahashi won. I mean, again, it, it's one of these things that if we weren't talking about the, the, match, the main event, I think this would be talked about a lot more. Like, it was just... Yes. Di- I mean... This is my favourite match, I think. On the card? Yeah. I, I mean, Omega Okada was an unbelievable match and you know probably a better match wrestling wise but this is like my favorite match yeah, I, know what you mean. I, I understand that and it was um it, it's, it's one of those things where again i'm kind of using what Meltzer says here but i just don't know how i sprayed the, oh, either i don't know how they do this stuff no i, don't, I, I mean there's only one kind of time when somebody got dropped on their head but yeah but even then like you know you got reverse runners and they're flying around the place and power bombs on the outside and just Oh, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's we, just... we even had a Canadian destroyer, like, just just chucked in there completely randomly at, at one point yeah, as well. Yeah, I know. It, it, it's that, they become like transition moves almost. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, it, it's just the, it's, it's, it's the fast-paced nature of it and the non-stopness and, you know, how they make everything mean something even though apparently in pro wrestling that's not how you do it. Okay, you, you get picking up. They should sell more. Whatever. Yeah. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it from start to finish because the sheer pace of it. I mean, and that match as well was 20 minutes long. It did not feel 20 minutes to me. It felt about no. five. Yeah, it, it went, went such... so fast. Yeah, because yeah. they went so fast as well. Yeah, like, and the moves as well that they were pulling off. I mean, Takahashi's moveset, I oh, think it's just... unbelievable. Well, it, surely... He's got like four or five moves, which I would consider like a finishing move. And then he's got the, the actual time bomb move. Oh, the time bomb is, is just... Ugh. It's just ridiculous. But Such a lovely move. It's so good. But yeah, that's, that's the thing. I think this was really, like, not that Takahashi needed it anyway, but with the win and with the championship, surely this has got to be the start of, of, of the rise for him as well. Because everyone seemed behind yeah. him too, and it felt like he was getting some real momentum. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, that Super Junior match. I don't, have you seen the Super Junior match, the final that he was in? Oh, yeah, which was even and better than this Soldier? One. Yeah, it was even yeah. better. Yeah, like, I mean, that was, I mean, Mexico, that 5, 5.5 stars. Yeah. Which, you know, I mean... My friends come round and we watch the Super Juniors like last week. And one of my mates, Adam, who's never watched New Japan before, he's just a massive WWE fan. Yeah, he watched that final match and he said that's probably the best match I've ever seen. He wow. don't know who the who two who the two wrestlers were, but that's like the what he felt from watching that match. Yeah, which I thought said it all. And then if you think that's Takahashi's last two matches, if you were going on the last two matches between any wrestler. He's like the best in the world because those two matches were unbelievable. I mean, yeah, I, I think that kind of. I, that's, that, I think 
as a whole for New Japan, that's what I'd get. It's the consistency. Yeah. And, and not only consistency, but like I say, I mean, in this case, okay, it was probably not as good as that one, but still, it's still up there. You know, yeah. it's, it's still an amazing. And that, I think that's what really gets me is how do you continually operate at this level? Um, yes, every match just seems special. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And I think that really just, I, it just, it just blows my brain. I, I understand they have more creative freedom than, yeah. um, yeah, than, uh, they do in wwe but still to come up with these consistent ideas and put their body on the line of the way they do it's just just amazing just amazing yeah i, I, I see you see you said about the creative freedom i don't know whether you've seen um shane helms hurricane helms what he said on twitter i about didn't know dominion so like, obviously he's just signed for ring of honor um shane helms and he's he um quoted about dominion saying that it was a prime example of pro wrestlers understanding who they are and what pro wrestling is better than any writer ever could. Sometimes you just got to let the artist be artist. Yeah, 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 that's and I true. thought that's so true. Like they obviously they have a massive say in what they do in these matches, and it pays off because the matches are just such better quality. I, I mean, yeah, I think that's right, right? Because I mean, I don't want to get too silly about it, but it's um, it's 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 like an art professional wrestling isn't it and yeah if you know what your character's good at you know what you're good at and you know what kind of story you're trying to tell all that you know all that kind of stuff i think i think there would be you know plenty of reasons to suggest you're going to come up with something better than a writer who's looking at it purely from a story point of view yeah and and, and, and really that's where that's where the issues come in and why yeah i think it's 100 percent correct when new japan is able to yeah just become well i, I it's, I don't even know what it is anymore. Like it's just become something that I don't think anyone could have really predicted a few years ago. No, but, you know, ever, no. Since, ever since it started to sort of transition back into being successful and, and being more sort of in front of the public, yeah, sort of public facing. I don't think anybody thought we'd yeah. get to the point where people were going best match ever and you know seven stars yeah. or whatever and all that kind of nonsense. So, yeah, I mean, the the Bullet Club really like oh, absolutely put, yeah. put eyes on it, and then I think from that it's just sort of really took its chance of how many people are watching. Yeah, I, by I, putting on these spectacles. That's it, and now they just keep. Like I say, they can't. They they they, they can't seem to stop now. No, <laughs> which is just. Which they is don't just... seem to disappoint, which is like what I I find fascinating. Like I don't ever watch um, a New Japan show and thought, oh, that was pretty boring. No, it's always so they always, always have something. something which is yeah, decent. there's yeah. always something. So I I do agree with you. I think the uh, the match at the best of Super Juniors was better, but this was still still ridiculous. And I enjoyed the Bullet Club, Cody Hangman Page and Mighty Skull. Um, defeating of all things, I didn't see coming. Tanahashi, no, Liger, and Rey Mysterio Jr. Now, don't get me wrong, Rey Mysterio, uh, Liger, and Tanahashi were ridiculous here. Yeah. And they were yeah. Fly- flying around the ring like nobody's business. And just, again, it, it went about 11 minutes, but it, the pace of those three was just. Oh, man. <laughs> it's it just so nuts. good to see Rey Mysterio. He's now, so. At, at 43 years old. Like, he was just... I understand it's the opponents as well, making sure they're in the right place, but still. Yeah. Just, we had a double 619. Yeah, exactly. And he was just... He didn't look out of place at all, nor that I ever thought that he would do. No. But, I love this mask as well. It looked really cool, didn't it? And it, the whole, it did, They yeah. looked like a team. All three yeah. of them together, like a really, really cool team. Like, I, I, yeah, I just... It was just and this match was more... It was less New Japan or what you'd expect. It was like an ex- exhibition. It was more fun, right? It was just a bit yeah. of fun. And I was surprised when Cody... Yeah, Cody got the win. Um, yeah, over I, I honestly, well. yeah, I honestly thought Ray would have got the win over Mighty Scale. Yeah, I, mean, I thought that was going to be how it finished because I just could see other than Liger eating a pin, which obviously did happen. I mean, they're not going to let someone pin Tanahashi and Ray Mysterio's first match. They're not going to let him eat a pin. So yeah. I did really think it was going to be the other way around, but it was still a really decent match. But again, it makes sense now, right? Because they're doing Cody yeah. and Omega at uh, the Cow Palace. Is it the Cow Palace? Yeah. Then? Yeah, yeah, the American show they've got yeah. um, going on. So is it the Cow Palace or is it the other one? Am I getting confused again? No, I think it is the one in America. It is, isn't it? I'm looking it up. Yeah. I'm looking it up because I mean, there's been too much red. Yeah, it is the Cow Palace one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it makes perfect sense. It's one of those things as well. So in the moment, you're like, what they do that for? But then yeah. it, one day it's later, all out. yeah, you're later. Okay, that makes, that makes, a fact, that makes sense. So. You know, I don't think Cody's going to win there by any stretch of the imagination. However, it does give it more weight. You just got a pin over Justin through, you know, just within the Liger, who yeah. is one of the biggest new you know, Japanese in the last what fifteen years, twenty years. Yeah, and he's already beat Omega. Exact, exactly, and it ties into our Bullet Club thing. Obviously, you know, we didn't talk yeah. about this. I don't think we did anyway. Um, the, you know, the Young Bucks reunion with with uh, Kenny Omega after the match tied into that too. Yeah, 
Did you go on off slightly off on a tangent? Did you happen to see um, the Being the Elite episode, the one before Dominion? Uh, I don't think I did. No. So uh, right at the end, Young Bucks uh, delivered a package to Omega, and he opens it, and then Abushi and Omega is like looking at it, but you, they, it cuts out, so you don't see what it is. And then the following episode, which they did after Dominion, shows them. Oh, he opens a package, and it's the Golden Elite T-shirts. Oh, it's so, so clever. It's just so yeah. clever. No so it's it... all tied in, which I, I love. You know, when I watch the um, the next episode after Dominion, it, it sort of maybe chuckle how they all tied that in. It's just this is why they're so good. Yeah, and it's, it's such a nice t-shirt as well. You can understand why they serve so much merchandise. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah, because they're just planning everything out and making sure that it looks nice too. Yeah. Um, it's one of those t- it's, it's, I've seen the t-shirt, I was like, oh, for God's sake, I've got to get that now. Yeah, no, it's just, no, it's just, it's just other way. It's the best uh, selling shirt. It, it sold more, more uh, shirts in the first 24 hours than anything else ever, right? On, yeah, yeah right. something ridiculous like that. Nice. Yeah. So that was good. And then we had Michael Elgin winning the Never Openweight Championship off Goto yep. and Tai Chi, which again, I didn't see coming. Uh, no, I, it I, was certainly wasn't, that. I, I wouldn't have predicted that beforehand if I had made predictions. So, no. yeah, that, that's the problem. But again, just, I mean, I, I wouldn't say this was, it wasn't a highlight for the really, imagination, but I thought it was really good. It was a decent match. Yeah, yeah I thought yeah. Big, big Mike looked quite, he was really in shape, wasn't he? I mean, well, the like, set, they mentioned the, he dropped like 40 pounds. Yeah, 40 so, pounds really apparently good. he's lost, which is... I don't know how the hell he's done that. But. He all of a sudden sort of became a high flyer as well. Like he was jumping off, jumping out of the ring and everything. He was coming off the turnbuckle. Oh, so it's like a new wrestler. Yeah, honestly, it was. It was. I have a feeling. I don't want to. I don't want to say this for sure. But when he came, because he won the title and because he's got in shape, it just made me think. Okay, there's a plan here. I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know what that plan is. But that was just my my gut feeling. Like they must, they must be wanting to do something with him. Yeah. Well, it's also another title coming off a Japanese person onto... Well, that's it, right? Is he American or Canadian? I think he's American. Uh, I don't know, actually, you know. I will look it up for you right now. But you're right, again, it, and I think if that's their plan and they want to use those guys to, you know, continually, yeah, you know, get, get into, you know, a more Western audience, then it makes sense. He's Canadian, yeah, yeah. born in on Canadian. To, how ridiculous is that as well? So Omega Jericho and uh, yeah. just like, three Canadians yeah, taking Canadian the titles. Guys. But yeah, a good match again. I, it, it was fine. It was bad. I don't think it was bad at all. It was really good. But yeah. it, with everything that was around it, I don't think there's going to be much talk about it going forward. No, no. Sort of uh, out of the, like, the singles titles as well. Went a bit under the radar, but yeah. it was. Oh, I enjoyed the match watching it. I did, and I'd be intrigued to see where we go next as well. Yeah. Uh, Suzuki Gun defeated Chaos. Um, yeah. good again just a good solid yeah. love the finish on this really enjoyed the finish on this you have to remind me like, I, I watched it so, a, about doing a thousand other things Yano is like quite well known for finishing up with like a low blow then a roll up yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which me and my mate Matt we always laugh about is as soon as Yano comes out we're like it's got to be a roll up he's got to be and he always <laughs> ends with like him winning a, a school world roll up or something uh, he went to low blow, Zack Sabre Jr. That's right, I remember. And he caught it between his legs and turned it into that a submission. Right. That was genius. You're right. That was so good. I forgot yeah. about that. That was dead. Oh, man. I love that. I also think it ties into Zack Sabre Jr. as well, right? Yeah, because like, he's like the king, so good at submissions. Yeah, king, king of moves. He's the king yeah. of moves. Like, no matter what you do, he'll probably have an answer for it. So yeah. I AJ about Styles that. needs to take note on that. Well, especially at the he moment. He can avoid yeah. a few low blows. How nuts is that 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 is the... Uh, Money in the bank is this weekend. After that, I mean, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be bad. Of course, I'm not. But I, I'm certainly intrigued. It's to a lot to live up to, isn't it? It's a lot to live up to. I forgot about that. I was so good that low blow, but it's so inventive. So this is the thing as well. Like I can't imagine. You have to imagine that. You know that was a Zack Saber Junior idea. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, definitely. I can't. I can't believe that it, that came from anywhere else. Yeah. To time it as well. Like he's he wasn't like looking at Yano when he threw the low blow. He was facing the other way. But that's the thing, yeah. It, it just <laughs> I'm sure they kind of maybe practice it in the day, but again, that's kind of that's kind of irrelevant because it's it's the pulling off during the event that counts. Yeah. And they absolutely smashed it. Yeah. It was such a good finish. I really enjoyed that. I I did because normally I like Yano to win because I just find him hilariously funny. Yeah. And Suzuki Goon, like Look, Minoru Suzuki scares the shit out of me. Well, I'm so. not he's got the scariest face of all time. That's why. Oh yeah, I mean, I, like anyone in the world, I would if I was a wrestler, I would rather be in the ring with like Brock Lesnar or Braun Strowman than I would Minoru Suzuki. That guy is terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Well, I think Braun Strowman would just beat you up. Suzuki may murder you. 
Like he made, yeah. or he made like start peeling off your skin with a knife or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel sorry because like it happened again. Like he always attacks the young lions, and they they eat a lot of his damage. Like he chucks them around. He's hitting them with chairs. Like every match he comes out, he's hitting them. Oh yeah, he just, he just smashes them up, right? Just yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah. smashes them up. It's like, it's like part of his gimmick now. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. ridiculous. But, you know, that it was... is brilliant. I love watching his matches. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's believable, which I think is kind yeah. of a you know. Uh, yeah, it just kind of sums up. Um, I, every, also, I realized I, I jumped over the Young Bucks beating uh, Sonata and Evil for the yeah. the IWGP Tag Team Championship, the heavyweight ones, which again was a you know what I really enjoyed that match. Yeah, and also, but it was it, the storyline wise, you know, the, the, the Young Bucks sort of complete their own journey yeah. to, to whatever comes next for them. So, yeah, I, I, the going on storyline as well, the the storytelling in the match, to, like the Young Bucks, I think they're the best at doing it because like. He, like, near the beginning of the match, Nick Jackson kicks the, the ring pole. And then the whole story of the match is he can't pull off any of the moves that they do, the, the tag team moves that they have, because his foot just keeps giving way and his leg keeps giving way. Yeah. And then you still got Matt Jackson with his back injury from... Yeah, from yeah, ages like, ago uh, now. Yeah, I mean, that's Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, so exactly. It's just so good, like, storytelling. It's just consistent, isn't it? Again, yeah. it, it rewards you for staying up with the product, which no one really does anymore. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I thought, yeah, I, I loved it. It tied into all of that and seeing the Young Bucks make it there, it kind of almost it doesn't start their career anew, but you know what I mean. It's like... Yeah, it's, it's a new start for them. It, it's a new start. It puts them in a new light to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, and who knows where they go from here. But yeah, solid match. Really, really good. I enjoyed that as well. Uh, I think they're the best in the world at tag. Oh, yeah, me too. There's no question about it. They're my favorite yeah. tag team. They just... I love what they do. They're, they're more than just doing spots. They understand storytelling. Yeah, uh, the selling, selling for injuries. Yeah, it's just exactly all that stuff is yeah, is just great. Uh, and then we had the two other tag team matches which started off the show. Uh, we had Suzuki Gun defeating Rapongi 3K. Yeah, uh, who also um, that's one of the few occasions where somebody held on to their championship. Yeah, uh, and that was the only one, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, I, I think it was. Yeah. And we had uh, Taguchi Japan defeating Chaos again. I, I like both. I like both. Um, yeah, they just kind of lost in the shuffle in hindsight, just because of what happened. I think, in a way, kind of the first half of this card, everything up to the Young Bucks, it's almost like two different cards in terms of you know, yeah, the, the way. And that's not really fault. That's probably no. the way it had to be booked in order to make sure that it worked in that sense. Yeah, I mean, they're still watchable matches. It's no, it's not like a like a bore fest. Yeah, but they're all still really watchable matches. Oh, I see. I mean, they they still help the card make make the card what it was. But yeah, they, there's no way in pretending that they were anything near what they did become in the end. I think that's the, yeah. that's the best way to look at it and stuff. But yeah, yeah and that's that's not taking anything away from from those matches. Like, it's still brilliant. Yeah, you know, still- I mean, I think they set up. Um, Juice Robinson against uh, Jay White now for the Intercontinental because he actually yeah, that's right. pinned him. Yeah, exactly. Which you, so match, again, so. so even these matches which feel almost inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, they're actually still telling stories and, yeah. they're, and they're still piecing everything together. I really like David Finley as well. I think he gets better yeah. every time I see him. As is Jay White, as is Juice Robinson. They all do, to be honest. I mean, Juice Robinson, you think that he was like CJ Parker like yeah. two, three years ago? Yeah, exactly. And now he's. And like, now you see how good he is now. He's so over over there. And I think at one point as well, he will, I think there's, there's some, I think at some point there will be the obvious occasion to like, okay, we've got to make this guy a bigger deal than he is already. We've got yeah. to start, we've got to start focusing on him a bit more. So yeah, definitely. I, I really like how he talks smack in the ring as well. Like you can literally hear him shout different stuff. So like at one point, I think he tagged David Finlay. Well, he got tagged from David Finlay and the ref didn't see it. So he pushed him back out and then like five minutes later, he got tagged in and he literally shouted at the ref, thank you, did you see that ref? But like so loud that I could hear it through my TV. So it was good. that loud. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's just, it, it's just great. This is what I mean. It's like the wrestling is always at its best when it has nuances and small things that stuff that in, in one way, you're like, did anybody else hear that? Or is that just me that I've taken away from it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really do. I'm a big fan of like, talking smack of the ring because I think Carmella does it really well. Yeah, she does. And uh, the so young Kevin bucks Owens especially well. do it well. And Kevin Owens definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they do. And I think it adds to it when it's, when it's done right, especially when it ties into other, uh, when it ties into other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was it. That was Dominion uh, from this Saturday. I would strongly advise if you haven't seen it, that you should go and see it. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> it's, definitely go watch it. It's so, so worth watch. I it, actually had a couple of people who... Um, Messaged me from our last um, episode we did on Twitter and uh, like ask about Dominion 
And then they got back to me after and said how much they thoroughly enjoyed it after like being a first time watcher. So there you go. I think right now, like I say, I'm not the man to talk about this because I I always sort of followed New Japan from afar, but it's only been the last few years I've started watching it properly. But for me, it's the first company I can remember ever since WCW, you know, what post '98, where I actually my allegiances. I wouldn't say my allegiances are tied. I just watch whatever I want. I don't look at it like that anymore. But I can certainly see from a quality point of view, no one's going to you know, take out WWE. It's just not going to happen. But I can certainly yeah. see from a quality point of view why more people would start to, to warm towards this. Because it's obviously something different, meaning if you are a bit bored of WWE, you have the alternative. But if you are looking for quote-unquote realistic, believable pro wrestling with has production values but doesn't go over the top, this is it. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is just it. It's just it's it, it's consistently good, uh, at least on the um, uh, on on the big stages like Dominion, uh, G One, and, and and Wrestle Kingdom. They, they're building new stars all the time. It's constantly changing. They're able to finish stories and start new ones. It's just a continually awesome promotion. That the moment seems to do everything right. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with that. It's yeah. it's very good to watch. Every 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 show that they do is is worth a watch. Exactly, and I think that's there, there is something to be said for that, especially if you're a wrestling fan looking for something different. I can't. It's long, and maybe you want to take a little break. But other than that, I think you could watch this whole show and come out the other end going, you know what? I can understand why it, it, it has become what it's become. Yeah, um, definitely. And I think well, the next thing we've got is the next thing we've got the American shows. It must be, right? That must be the next New Japan thing. I think got. so. And then it's um, Strong Style Evolved UK, which that's I'm right. actually going, I've actually got tickets to go see on nice. Sunday. And that's the, the Manchester. No, La- Manchester one. Yeah. Manchester it's one, Milton it? Keynes on the Saturday night. And that's then right. And Manchester then the, the Sunday. Well, dude, that's going to be awesome. We'll have to get you back on for that as well to talk about Yes, talk definitely. About those, those question because I don't even know what the Manchester show is. No, I, I no one does. I, I don't I, think they've announced any matches yet. Actually, so. they did earlier, you know. Uh, what, for, when, for the Manchester show? I don't know if it's for the Manchester show, but they certainly announced... Let me see if I can find it quickly before we wrap up. Today. I saw it, People were tweeting about it, and they've made, um, they've made logos and everything. But I, I know it's Cody Okada. Uh, Cody Omega, sorry. At the UK shows? Uh, not for the UK shows, for the next show that they've got. Yeah, yeah, I know that show, was yeah, like, announced. For the next show they've got. I, I'm never going to be able to find this now. I thought it's in a New Japan... United, actually UK will probably do. Let me see if I can find these images that were released. No, I can't find it. But they are out there. Um, all I know is David Starr is on one of the matches. Oh, really? Yes. That'll be good. That will be, will be good. He's very, very good. But now I can't, I can't, I can't for the live of me find it because they were all on... Um, yeah, someone was just tweeting about them earlier and now I can't know where. But yeah, that is definitely one of them. Um, I'm just... Qu- I've been still scanning through. Yeah, so... I've got one. The second night in Manchester is El uh, Fantasmo and Bone Soldier going against Tiger Mask and David Starr. That is, oh, decent. Yeah, that is one of them. Um, and David Starr is taking on Tiger Mask in the, on the night before. That's all the ones I can find at the moment. So yeah, there, there are some, there are some uh, details out there about matches, but weird that uh, I, I thought somebody would have posted them on a new site. They probably are, and I just can't see them. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be a good show is, uh, is the point. Yeah, uh, definitely. So I'm looking yeah. forward to it. So what day is that? What day is the Manchester show? That is July the 1st, I believe. Right, July the 1st. So we will get you back on in about three and a half weeks' time then. So that Sounds we good can, to me. We, we can talk about it. But yeah, indeed. If you should really, even if you don't want, want to watch the whole show, you certainly should go and check out uh, the main event. I think it's one of those things that you should probably watch, even if you're just a wrestling fan, so that when you want to start talking about what is and isn't the best match of all time, you have to have watched this just to have some kind of authority on, on the idea. Yeah, you know, it needs to be in your wrestling lexicon. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's really important. Strong word there. I like that. Yeah, I like it. Wrestling lexicon. It's one of those things like you haven't seen a Flair versus Steam. And also, you have to do this. Do whatever you want. But to me, if you actually want to sit down and have that debate, you need to watch stuff like Flair Steamboat. Uh, you know, maybe you need to watch some of the Rock Austin matches. I know some people like those a lot. Or you know, and it, Punk it, Cena. Yeah, I think you know, I, I wouldn't. I'd actually you know probably put this above those. But I think you need to see them. Those matches yeah. that everybody talks about, I think you need to see them and you sit down and you make up, uh, you make up your own mind. Yeah. Now, Luke, before we do uh, wrap this up, I believe you're starting your own wrestling podcast, correct? I am, very soon, yeah. Um, no dates as of yet, but um, I'm hoping to get the ball rolling, get a few shows going before I go live so that there's plenty to listen to. But yes, yeah, uh, the plan is to do sort of like fantasy booking. So what you do, uh, what, I w- what I would do, in my opinion, to people like Roman Reigns who... Uh, 
Everyone some, loves. Some people don't like. No, um, I heard about so, this. Yeah, certain things like that. So that's that's what I've got sort of in the works coming up soon. Right, okay, and where can they find you on social media and stuff? Watch if they want to see what you're going to do. So on Twitter, I'm at Mr. Luke Robbo, and I'll post any details of when, if I have any dates coming up soon for the podcast, when that will be out on nice. that. Nice to do that. And also uh, follow me at Cyber316 or keep an eye and I'll make sure to retweet all that information as well. So if you do want to hear Luke talk more about wrestling, obviously we'll make sure he comes back on to talk New Japan stuff in the future. But also if you want to hear a fantasy book, Roman Reigns, everyone wants to do that as well. So I'm sure you'll get lots of hate for that as well because you'll say one thing that nobody likes and that'll be the end. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but then everyone hates what they're doing with him now. So anything surely can be better what, than what is happening now. That's true. You're right. That's you're why I look at it. Yeah, you're 100% correct. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, make sure you keep uh, an eye out for Luke when he's doing that. And like I said, we'll have him back on to talk about his experiences live at New Japan Manchester. I think that'll be good. I look forward to that. Uh, yeah, so do I. Also, again, youtube.com forward slash the middle report rules. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316 makes all of this possible otherwise i'd have to be running around doing other things uh twitter at simon 316 instagram simon 316 and make sure you drew uh join the pro wrestling podcast group on facebook just search for simon's pro wrestling podcast there's a massive chat on there about all their dominion stuff as well so you can watch it and then go carry on that chat i think they would uh i think they'd enjoy that would be my guess everyone seemed to enjoy talking about it over the last few days uh but luke thank you very much for your time and as always thank you so much for the support thank you for having me again always we'll get you back on in a few weeks and uh, yes, if you're on iTunes, give us a review. Uh, give us a five-star rating. We'll be back tomorrow to talk Raw, SmackDown, and preview Money in the Bank, give our predictions. And then we'll also be back before Money in the Bank to run down some last-minute uh, things about my first ever wrestling singles match for Defiant, which is this Sunday. And we'll also answer some questions as well, which will uh, the thread will be on the Facebook group, so another reason to join that. But as always, thank you for listening to me on this random Tuesday, and I will talk to you in about 24 hours' time. 